on this good morning blend. Yeah. And um, and we did it a while ago, and that's the other thing, you know, like how did that come, you know, you know, t t talking about that, but then kind of recommitting and re sort of relaunching. But that was just, it's just, in that sense, like dance your it, it was just something that I thought would be fun. The new label to do. was beautiful. So, like, we've known each other. It's kind of hard to say how long. Uh, I mean, it's at least. 16 years you grew up where I grew up you're a lot younger than me <laughs> but because of your skills always everyone always knew about you as a 12 year old drummer 13 year old drummer even though we were you know a decade ahead of you mm. unbeknownst to me yeah but we did <laughs> we did the hotshot kid drummer remember I used to go to rehearsals with a yeah. giant like a, it was like two liters too, of, too much <laughs> But it was right then, actually, I remember being in Europe with you, and I was trying to figure out how to, like, send a deposit, mm. like, wire a deposit mm. for a coffee roaster. Mm. That was in 2012. What's the first thing you did an experimental roast in? A like, popcorn maker. Popcorn maker, yeah. right? Yeah. And you got four locations in San Diego. Yeah. But, well, yeah, yeah but, that, that, but I'm just saying, like, that we were... I think that inspiration and my enthusiasm for coffee, I, I do attribute a lot of that to the conversations that we had and the fun that we had. Kind well, of that's nice to hear. Checking out like different coffees and talking about it and just being, we were a little bit different because, yeah, you carried two liters of coffee around with you. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I feel like I can drink coffee all the way up. I don't know if it makes me sleep bad, but I know that if I'm tired, I'm just tired. Mm -hmm. And I use coffee as... A uh, morning ritual, a comforting routine, mm -hmm. you know, like I just like, I like having a cup. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I dig hot cups of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing this. I like being, because, because we're here. Mm -hmm. And like, I was like, I can, well, let's, I'll, let's go to your, let's go to your studio and like, just make a cup of coffee. Speaking of you making fat batches of coffee. Yeah. That being the thing where you make it on the bus. And yeah. All your gear. Yeah. And then crew and everybody would come and it all disappear. I remember one time like trick or treat when just giving uh, people their coffee. When uh, Peter McKinnon was on the out with us on the road, and he yeah, didn't he, he didn't believe me. We had a group text going, uh -huh. you know, like with all the crew and all yeah. the bus. And all I had to write was like, I go watch this. This is literally like people will come out of a cupboard yeah. <laughs> that you won't even know. I'm going to just write this text message and within 30 seconds, everybody will just filter in it like cockroaches. Yeah. In yeah. the venue or like outside, it was like people just came in from, it was yeah. really fun. We, <clears throat> I was going to ask you, <laughs> good morning blend. Yeah. Like that was your idea. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you had a way to, you know, you wanted to tell a story, you were working on something, and then essentially, you know, what does it, where does it come yeah. from? Yeah, so I'm a massive Beatles fan. Yeah. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Yeah. I was in my little studio at home one day, and I just wanted to do something. I used all the, like, Abbey Road and Beatles-inspired plugins out there. I was like, I'm just going to have some fun and just <laughs> record a Beatles song. So I did Good Morning, Good Morning. And then it got me thinking about how we had talked at some point mm -hmm. about doing a roast together. Mm -hmm. And then it was just the two ideas converging. Yeah. Now, I don't think you'll frown up upon this. Yeah. I like the good stuff, but I'm not snobby. You know, I love, I love going to Denny's and getting coffee. I, it can be so many different things to an individual. But, I mean, the, so that's there for you as an enthusiast if you want it. Mm-hmm. But also, it's just like, how simple is this? It's like, it's like such a natural thing. It's so cool. So it's like wherever you're at, you can, you know, you're just enjoying it for mm. that, that sort of core sensibility. And uh, be honest, what is your brewing method in the morning? Oh, it's, uh, I use a, a batch brew, a, a drip machine. Yeah. It's the Breville. Oh. Back together, I took it completely apart. I yeah. set the table on fire because yeah. I rewired it wrong. <laughs> Do you remember that? So it took me a long time even within drinking black coffee, to realize that when it's done well, yeah. so many more flavors pop out. There can be almost like a, a fruity element yeah. to it, um, especially in a lot of the lighter roasts. And yeah. I, I like a dark roast. Yeah. I don't care if the beans are burnt. Since you got into, like, were you drinking coffee before you started making it? Not really. Which is I was the same. I had me. the same path as you. As since I didn't start drinking coffee until I was into my thirties, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like 
a real like I used to go to coffee shops with people, but I would get like steamed milk and a yeah. cookie, like yeah. something <laughs> stupid. You know? Then I went into yeah vanilla lattes and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and I was like, I was like okay, like then I started doing it because I wanted to be like part of it, more part of it. I don't do anything, you know. I still I don't drink alcohol. I don't do anything else, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to. I just wanted to participate in something. Then all of a sudden, it was like, it was Australia. The first time I had like a flat white. Flat white. And a guy put it on the table. Mm -hmm. I took a sip and I was like, what is it? I was just, you know, and I was like, what do you mean milk and what? Like, what sugar? Like, what did you put in this? It's like, he saw it's just it's espresso and milk. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I asked him like five times, he said, look, man. That's all there <laughs> so is. That's all there is. Yeah. I got to move on. Just brewed mm -hmm. coffee. And then you're like, wait a second, like, I can remember my other time at a cafe up here in LA mm -hmm. somewhere. I don't know, I took a sip and I was like, mm -hmm. what is this? Yeah. And it was actually, a, it was from Intelligentsia or something. Yeah. I asked the person, I said, where did this coffee come from? Mm -hmm. And she told me, and I immediately was like, oh my gosh. And that's where all of a sudden, like all these flavors and things. Yeah. yeah. But at my worst of discovering I loved coffee yeah. and just amping up, I'm also yeah. a creature of habit, which yeah. is not good for what I'm yeah. about to say. Four quad shot vanilla lattes a day. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but that's you're an extreme person. Like I don't mean extreme, like you ride dirt bikes and stuff. But yeah, you're definitely just, not. There's a lot of different versions. <laughs> Hopefully, people don't automatically go to that. But yeah. you, your tennis obsession. There's a lot of layers to you that people probably don't know. Do not and play tennis with this man because he has an 18 foot wingspan <laughs> at the net, and you can't lob him because he's eight feet tall and it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I want to win. <laughs> no, but no, but you, you, you get, when you get into something, you get in deep and then I can see where you think like in that scenario, more is better. <laughs> when I get in a, a work mode and every break is associated with going to get coffee, if I'm working from X hour to X hour, that just ends up being that many breaks with that much coffee. And it's like, what did I just ingest? But I, I think I do the same in the sense like, it's just to have the pairing. Mm -hmm. Like if I want to, like say if I'm working in the, in the metal shop or something like that, I want to work. I just always want to have, I don't know, like I'm enjoying the process. It's not just work. It's not just like to have the two of them. You have something to look forward to. It's something special for yourself. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's a reward. It's an easier way to get out of bed. Nice. Yeah, I, I dig all that stuff. So this is it. The new good we morning blend. Cheers to this. Yes. Oh, I got something else too. Uh oh. Say. More surprises? Yeah. Um, you were always sort of tasked with um, showing me a lot of the guitar parts that you wrote for Angels and Airwaves. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see that I can noodle around with, one that I think, a song that you put out last year. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to see if you could kind of help me out with it. Let's do it. Okay, that's what I want to do now. I actually wrote this riff for something else. Okay. And never intended on it being one of my own songs. Uh -huh. But months later, I found myself humming it. And I'm like, well, if I'm still humming it, that means it's in there yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm it gonna, is as soon I'm as you hear it, it, it's like, yeah. If the beginning was, so, I don't know. Yeah. And that's not the way you would play it, but that's just, right? Okay, but let me just... You just play it. Okay. And, uh, and then we'll see like what mm. it came up with. It says, uh... I always played it with the song, so it's gonna be this hard. This is really interesting to me. Yeah. So here's yeah. what's really interesting. Yeah. So almost every note yeah. is right yeah. as the note. But what's interesting to me is that, okay, so the track itself has a guitar riff mm -hmm. and I'm doubling it with like some Mellotron brass stuff. Mm. So you're hearing the, the higher octave of that. Uh -huh. But what I'm actually playing is way more simple. <laughs> and the only note that wasn't right yeah. Is so you're going yeah. right. It's actually oh. right, but you're playing it an octave. So yeah. what the the way it actually is yeah. is just on the single the whole time. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. 
right? But yeah. but you were hearing the Mellotron stuff, and that's why you're playing it up here. Okay. But job well done. Uh, I, <laughs> I have an answer to that. Like, because the oh, half step yeah. is more major sounding. Yeah. And you spent a lot of time with Tom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I was playing around with it, I literally was like, you know, I, mean, I was trying to find, I mean, I'm just trying to step mm. all over the place. Yeah. And that yeah. sounds right now. Why did it ever sound? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. The amount of times, especially when I first joined yeah. Angels, yeah. and Tom and I would work on parts or whatever, I'd play something in minor. He's like, it just sounds wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. it's a minor chord. He's yeah. like, it sounds wrong. Yeah. And then you make it to a major. He's like, there it is. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs>